Welcome to Ofhavri. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Several stories breaking this morning. A 6.1 magnitude earthquake uh, strikes over uh, near uh, Iran, actually, uh, to the east part of Iran. Uh, sarin gas again in the media all over the world uh, accusing Syria once again of the horrendous crimes of using sarin gas on civilian populations. Well, it looks like to us that it's uh, back again, foreign powers trying to frame Syria for another deadly gas attack that's something that Bashar al-Assad is once again not guilty of. Last time, Aaron Erdem of the Turkish government, a former uh, parliament member inside of Turkey, and from what I was told recently, is still a parliament member of Turkey, uh, had the sufficient evidence that was able to prove that the Turkish government was well aware of the smuggling of the sarin gas inside of uh, Syria and was used against the civilian population in the area of the rebel groups there in order to blame it on President Bashar al-Assad and to justify boots on the ground. Now we reported just the other day that uh, in Beirut, Lebanon, the United States has already landed two huge ships there they're now moored right there at Beirut, Lebanon, ready to unload all this des desert camo military equipment for a possible invasion into Syria. Also, Israel doing a lot of uh, exercises up in the Golan right now. Is it a possibility that there's going to be an invasion into Damascus? And of course, we know President uh, uh, Donald Trump is believing the media propaganda that indeed uh, the Bashar al-Assad is using gas uh, chemical weapons on his own people. But as it was before, there's already the evidence that has come out that has clearly identified that this famed White Hellman's group and others are clearly in the know about the attack before it happened and that it wasn't Bashar al-Assad's government from the beginning. Let's take a look at the evidence that we have. Reuters reporting here on their own uh, news, as many others, CNN and others that are already joined into the campaign. Scores reported killed in gas attack on Syria rebel area. Well, that makes it look more believable if you do it on the re rebel held area, of course, right? And uh, they show all the images of the children. That's the main ones they want to show. Interesting, they don't want to show all the, uh, the, the adults. They just focus mainly on children. That's to appeal to the hearts and minds of the American public and the European public to get them to uh, in agreement to go to war against Bashar al-Assad. And of course, it is a tragedy for the children. But what's more of a tragedy is when you know for propaganda purposes, you you do this type of action in order to justify a war against a government that never did it in the first place. That is the most hideous crime of all. Uh, anyway, a suspected Syrian government chemical attack killed scores of people, including children in the northwest province, province of Idlib. On Tuesday, a, a monitoring group, medics and rescue workers in the rebel-held area said, notice again, it is uh, medics and rescue workers. Of course, that happens to be none other than the White Helmets. All right, so just hold that thought in mind there. Now, at the same time, rebel warehouse with chemical weapons hit by Syrian airstrike in Idlib, Russian MOD uh, states that there. Um, this is on RT News, and it states here, the Syrian Air Force uh, has destroyed a warehouse in Idlib province where chemical weapons were being produced and stockpiled before, before being shipped to Iraq. Uh, Russia Defense Ministry spokesman said the strike, which was launched mid-Tuesday, targeted a major Reba ammunition depot east of the town of Khan uh, Shikon. Russian Defense Ministry spokesman, spokesman Major General Igor Karashkinov said in a statement there. Uh, now, that again, another evidence there that the rebels are the ones that are producing these. And, of course, we cannot forget uh, Seymour Hersh. Uh, who also stated that Hillary Clinton approved the sending of Libya's sarin gas to the Syrian rebels. 
So this was evidence that was brought out by the British uh, journalist C uh, Seymour Hersh uh, that the Obama administration, of course, had falsely blamed the Syrian government. He was one of the many journalists that also uh, recognized that this was all a fabrication. RT News had brought out Aaron Erdem, the, uh, the Turkish uh, uh, parliament member there, who had spoken before the parliament, long before it ever became public, about the knowledge, the well-documented uh, knowledge of the Turkish government knowing that ISIS was smuggling in the weapons of Syrian gas, uh, the abilities to be able to make it, and that this had been gotten from, as he quoted, from European partners, and that the United States did it very, or the United States only was turning their a blind eye while those weapons were being smuggled into the country. So this, this clearly there's been a trail proven that it has nothing to do with President Bashar al-Assad, uh, but we really want to give a congratulations to a partisan girl on Twitter. She is a Syrian resident and has been covering many of these false flag events, not so much that it's a false flag, it's a real Sy Sy Syrian gas attack, but uncovering exactly what they are doing in order to make it look like the real deal. Now what she's done, several brought out several things here, says here, the horrifying thing is the White Helmets and Orient News would have had to poison kids to film the fake chemical weapons stories. One thing she said. Now this is what she's bringing out here. Let me just kind of click on this so you can see this a little bit better here. Um, um, no, it might be better if we don't click on it because we already have it blown up. In the article here, it states, states right here, uh, tomorrow's, and she's quoting a guy, you'll see his name in a minute because there's another clip where you can actually see who the guy was. Tomorrow, starting a media campaign to cover the uh, density of air raids on rural Hama and use chlorine poison against civilians. Now this was being stated by a guy on Twitter inside of Syria that they were already planning uh, such an attack there. Now we'll just kind of follow what she does here. Um, and again, it's the same one there stating there that they were planning on doing this. Uh, and she says here, tomorrow we're going to, she quotes it again, tomorrow we're going to create a media story about a chlorine gas attack, later changed to sarin, even though the Syrian government no longer has it, uh, she states there. Uh, this here is a picture here, of course, this is how we know it's the White Helmets were involved with it because they show the White Helmets. This is from Paul uh, Antonopoulos. My article on what does, uh, what does not add up in the Idlib chemical weapons attack. Uh, and this is what he notes here. And what, he's, what he brings out in his own article is the experts that, that show clearly that the, the White Helmets are not using protective gear. Now what's ironic about this is they were issued one month before the attack, they were issued the, the gear to be able to protect themselves from the sarin gas, but when they're recording the video, they're not using the suits to make the video. Now that was one of their first mistakes because you can die from just touching uh, a victim of this and they're using their bare hands. They got the mask on, but they weren't thinking about uh, putting on the suits before they actually uh, put on uh, the video itself. Now, this is one of the doctors there. He says, this is the last, latest from the sarin attacks. Patients are still flooding in. This child's been rushed in without any family. They're probably dead. That's his uh, statement. Our hospital is getting full from the sarin attack today. Anyone that wants evidence, I will video call you. All right? Just to set up the, the, the propaganda. Patients, as he said, are flooding in, yet this doctor seems to be the main source of gas tech. Has time to film, tweet, and video calls. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, uh, let's see, uh, and you now they say they blame Britain but behind it, the U.S. position on Assad, UK funds the White Helmets, uh, jihadist rebels kidnap civilians before fleeing village in northern Hama, that's another issue that she was bringing out, uh, the jihadist rebels of Hayat Tahir al-Sham and al uh, Jayesh al Iza kidnapped the inhabitants of Katab in the north. Uh, 200 civilian, 250 civilians kidnapped by Al Qaeda one week before the chemical attack. 
Uh, so they are believing that these uh, civilians that were kidnapped were actually being used to make the video. Uh, now she's going to bring out a very good point on that, and I'm going to show you that here in just a moment. It's very sad, very dis 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 disheartening to see this. I do warn you before we go up to some of this evidence that Partisan Girl is going to show here. Uh, it is graphic. It is children. Uh, but I think it's important that we bring this out uh, for the purpose of what she is trying to show here. And that is some of the children in the chemical weapons attack appear to have been bludgeoned to death, not dying from the chemical attacks. All these children here have blunt force trauma to their heads. Uh, and I'll go off that quickly because I don't want you to have to see that there. Again, uh, uh, another angle of the fire hose location seems to be a White Helmets base with hideouts dug into the rocks, they're pointing out. And of course, these are supposed to all be victims, and yet they're not using any protective gear at all to try to hose the people off, which is only would have contaminated them worse uh, if this was really the case here. Um, they took the gas mask, they've been paving the road uh, in the last days. We are sure it was uh, a coincidence, uh, is what one person says about it as well. Uh, the, the, the point is, and let me, there's several more on here. Let me back up here. Um, let's see here. Yeah, here, here was the thing that she was pointing out right here. This is, uh, while making the fake video, the White Helmets didn't realize Saren's first responders need full body suits as it will kill kill via skin contact. All right, now this is uh, to show you, this is exactly what they're supposed to be wearing. And they were issued this only uh, a month before the attack was to take place. In fact, the other thing that uh, Partisan Girl points out on a lot of these issues here is that uh, almost everyone were getting masked the day before the attack. All the rebels, they were all getting masked the day before the attack. So they were prepared for this coming to, uh, to, to be coming. Now this is what one expert actually said in response to the way this was being done. He says, organic phosphates can spread by simple contact or inhalation. In, it, uh, in its gas form, it would persist for the same time as it takes water to evaporate. There's no real evidence of patients being decontaminated in the way that we would consider appropriate decontamination, yet none of the treating or transporting personnel are wearing any protective gear at all. If treating personnel were not wearing protective gear and were exposed to weapons grade organic phosphate, we would expect them to be injured in some way, says uh, Caldicott. We know the phenomena of off-gassing, which is the delivery of dangerous products in the environment by contaminated patients. It is not that important to use the emergency department for simple inter inter interseed Po uh, insecticide poisoning, uh, that is. So this is chemical grade, uh, uh, weapons grade, and so therefore, as there, as he's basically to surmise that, uh, is just definitely not realistic what we're seeing there. Um, let's see, we have, this is where they were actually given the protective suiting. Again, you can see where the uh, where the, the white helmets are right by the cave there where they were doing the spray off there. The photo was taken more than a month ago. Uh, the white helmet uh, terrorists receiving a training on dealing with chemical attacks in the same location where they're actually uh, working with the people. And this would have been the suits they would have, should have been wearing when they were doing the video. I guess they just forgot about that important aspect that figured nobody would actually put two and two together. Um, so let's see if we, I know she had several other things on there. Of course, she had Seymour's article on there as well. Uh, and, you know, again, the, the, I think the most important uh, and the most uh, chilling evidence that uh, Partisan Girl had shared was the fact that one man in particular actually spoke about um, that they were going to do this, uh, this uh, drill the day before it actually happened. Right here is where it's at. Tomorrow we are going to create a media story about chlorine gas attack. And it was the very, uh, from what I understand, it was the next day or something of that accord there that the sarin gas took place. Uh, he called it chlorine gas, but uh, maybe he just didn't realize that they were going to use sarin gas instead. Uh, like I said, tremendous amount of evidence that this young lady has put together, uh, and, and that just being from her own uh, work there, uh, that 
clearly identifies uh, or, or seems to help prove the fact that it was not the Assad government dealing with this attack on his own people, but in fact the rebels in behind a massive propaganda uh, campaign once again and unfortunately using real civilians as their own guinea pigs. What a shame indeed. Uh, Damascus also, by the way, uh, pr pr President Bashar al-Assad is accusing Ankara of capturing Syrian territories. Not only have they been capturing Syrian, ter Syrian territories, but uh, Turkey is also building military bases inside of Syrian territory. How does Russia just keep allowing this type of stuff to go on? I have no idea. Uh, this is something, it's not so much the news article itself that I wanted to bring to your attention, but more so from a pro prophetic uh, standpoint, I wanted to share this with you. This was on Sputnik News. Uh, it is about a month old uh, back, uh, oh no, I apologize, no, actually this is uh, current news. Syria to respond to terrorist support uh, Israel's aggression according to the ambassador. But what's interesting is the name of the ambassador that you're looking at, Riyad Haddad, uh, the Russian, uh, the Syrian ambassador to Russia, uh, speaking very aggressively against Israel for making the raids inside of the country there. Of course, Prime Minister Netanyahu saying he's targeting the Hezbollah uh, convoys bringing weapons over into uh, southern Lebanon which is a threat to Israel and at the same time uh, President Bashar al-Assad saying that they're actually targeting the Syrian government. Uh, of course uh, Mr. Haddad also speaks about how in this article here that they shot down one Israeli plane and severely damaged the other one. Uh, in response to that Israel has denied all of this but again it's his name Riyadh Haddad. What does that mean? to you guys or to most people that be listening? Well, maybe not a whole lot. But for me, it really caught my attention because Haddad happens to be historically uh, the Edomite child, the sole Edomite child through the bloodline of Esau, his descendants that survives uh, the conquest that David and Saul did against the, uh, uh, the, the house of Esau there and wiping out his descendants. Well, that child survives, goes down to Egypt. He's reared by the Pharaoh of Egypt, marries the Pharaoh's uh, wife's sister, and later goes into none other than Syria. Of course, later his descendants migrate to northern Africa and then finally over into Rome as the Ob prophet Obadiah declares uh, later in his own prophecies that they would end up in Rome. But isn't it kind of interesting because Hadad, it says that, uh, that he had raised up an adversary against uh, Solomon during the times of Solomon. And of course, this Hadad uh, that we're um, speaking of was after the times of, uh, or excuse me, what, or excuse me, was definitely during the times of Solomon because it was after the death of David, and he become a thorn in the side of Solomon himself, uh, David's own son, uh, constantly waging war with Israel, etc. And yet now we have a man by the name of Riyadh Hadad. Uh, who is in power and again who is a thorn in the side to Israel just as it was in the days when Hadad Esau's descendant was many many years uh, ago. Uh, a couple other things I want to hit on real quick before we close out the broadcast here. Russia's motorized rifle brigade uh, of the Ordenburg Oblast Central MD has been alerted plus 1,000 pieces of equipment marching to the range. Uh, they are uh, preparing for a drill going on in that region there. Uh, those of you that would like to know where that is, that's down there by uh, just on the north side of Kazakhstan. And of course, if they have to take and make a track towards Ukraine's border, not too hard to do it. And a thousand pieces of military equipment is no small amount of equipment. And as we mentioned earlier, a 6.1 magnitude earthquake uh, hit near Iran's second largest city at a depth of 10 kilometers. If you remember, it was just the other day uh, that we had the uh, we had the same uh, or similar type of earthquake in eastern Russia that struck as well. 
Uh, so uh, just a bit concerning, no doubt. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. That's a kind of a, a look at the updates today. Maybe later this evening we may have another news broadcast. We'll, we might cover on some other issues there. Don't forget to check out Yana's channel, Rise Up Children of God. Got another interesting broadcast. We'll be loading up there here in just a little bit this morning. I'll leave a link there in the description below to her channel there. Very fascinating interview she did with uh, a brother named Richard there inside Israel, and I'm sure it'll be a blessing to you. Shalom.